This is the untold story of Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, whose life would traverse from a prairie town in central Texas hill country to the tumultuous vastness of the Pacific Ocean. When the Civil War begins, Fredericksburg, Texas, does not escape the strife and bloodshed that comes with war. The army is removed from nearby frontier forts. The future Admiral's grandfather, Charles Henry Nimitz, organizes and is captain of the Gillespie Rifles. He helps take over the task of patrolling the Indians. While Fredericksburg is controlled by the Confederacy, the German settlers are mostly Union sympathizers. Although not many, there are some slaves in Gillespie County. However, the German immigrants are not plantation owners and don't support slavery. Soon, Nimitz becomes the enrolling officer for the Confederacy, a position that is unpopular with many of his neighbors. During the Civil War, many people are killed around Fredericksburg. One notable incident was the Nueces Massacre. While fleeing Texas, 37 German Texans were killed by Confederate forces. In the years after the Civil War, the Nimitz Hotel continues to do well as a stagecoach stop. In the 1870s, Charles adds a shape like a bow of a ship and a mast so that the hotel looks like a ship. It is often called the Steamboat Hotel. The Admiral's grandfather expands the hotel to 50 guest rooms and housing for the family. He adds balconies, a flower garden, dining room, brewery, bar, saloon, general store, smokehouse, bathhouse with bathtubs and privies, and a combination casino, ballroom, and theater. Mrs. Nimitz does a lot of cooking and cleaning at the hotel. She supervises the straightening of the rooms as well as the fueling of the stoves and fireplaces. In 1875, the Nimitz Hotel continues to have famous guests, including the future president, Rutherford B. Hayes. The infamous Old West outlaw, Johnny Ringo. Ringo was later found near Tombstone, Arizona. He had a bullet in his head, the result of suicide or, as some claim, is killed by Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, or buckskin Frank Leslie. Another guest is Adolphus W. Greeley. He is an army officer and polar explorer. He is a Medal of Honor winner and a third cousin of Horace Greeley. Another patron is the writer O. Henry. Charles Nimitz is enthusiastic and somewhat rowdy. He likes practical jokes, including secretly putting hotel silverware in the bags of departing guests. Then he organizes a posse to overtake the guests and bring them back to the hotel for a mock trial. Another tale that he likes to tell is that during a visit to New York, he attends the theater and sees a realistic fire scene. After he returns to the Nimitz Hotel in Texas, he climbs several flights of stairs to his room. He can't get that realistic fire scene that he saw in New York out of his mind. He thinks that 
He is way above ground level and what would happen if there's a fire. He goes to bed but can't sleep. He gets out of bed and notices that there's a rope by the window with a sign that says, Fire Escape. He decides to try it. He throws the free end of the rope out of the window. He goes down the rope, but he's only in his nightshirt. It is dark and he doesn't think anybody will see him. After getting to the courtyard, he begins climbing back up the rope, but tires quickly. He can't make it and goes into an open window. A woman in the room begins screaming. He backs out of the window and lowers himself to the ground. The screams of the woman wake everybody in the hotel. Lights go on and when late revelers leave the hotel saloon, they see Charles Nimitz in his nightshirt. They take him to the bar and make him buy drinks for everybody. Charles likes to tell tall tales. One story that he likes to tell is about squeamish guests eating a plate of the hotel's famous smoked sausage. While the guest is enjoying the meal, Charles reminisces about a local shootout that took place during the past summer. He relates that they found an unidentified corpse. Charles tells the guest that he did not have any way of preserving the corpse because it was August. So he hung the body in the smokehouse along with the sausages. By the time the dead man's wife arrives from New York, her husband is well smoked. She protests that this cannot be her husband because he had been a white man. Nimitz then explains that unless she can identify her husband's body, she will not be able to collect any insurance money. She then recognizes her husband and takes him home. Nimitz does not often reach his punchline because the squeamish guest usually quickly leaves the room before the end of the story. During this time, President Garfield is assassinated on September 19, 1881. Vice President Chester Arthur becomes President of the United States. His presidency is met with low expectations. President Arthur remodels the White House and reforms the civil service. He spends a lot of time hunting, fishing, and with extravagant dinners. President Arthur champions the new Navy. Because of ill health, President Arthur does not make a serious effort to seek the nomination for a second term. He dies almost two years later due to kidney disease. In 1884, President Cleveland is elected. Fredericksburg, Texas, the birthplace of the future admiral, Chester William Nimitz. His father is Chester Bernard Nimitz. He is unassuming and often overlooked at gatherings. Chester Bernard Nimitz is a frail person. He has weak lungs and a rheumatic heart. To help improve his health, he becomes a cowboy and drives cattle from Texas to Nebraska. Chester Bernard Nimitz falls in love with Anna Josephine Henke. She is the daughter of the butcher. She has a strong will and character. Anna is the eldest of 12 children and learns to accept responsibility. She is popular and has many suitors. 
In March 1884, Anna marries Chester Bernard Nimitz. He is 29 years old and she is in her early 20s. Tragically, six months before the future Admiral is born, his father, Chester Bernard Nimitz, dies from rheumatic fever. Anna is left a widow and pregnant. During at least the early stages of her pregnancy, Anna lives with her mother. Across the street is the Nimitz Hotel, owned by the Admiral's paternal grandfather. Anna has a small back bedroom on the ground floor. The family of the Admiral's mother, the Hankies, are hard-working people. They are descended from the German pioneers who were involved with the founding of Fredericksburg. On February 24, 1885, Anna gives birth with the help of a midwife. Chester William Nimitz is blonde, as was his father. He was named after his father, Chester Bernard Nimitz. His paternal grandfather noted that he was born close to George Washington's birthday. His mother remarks that he is my Valentine boy. In episode three, we will continue to look for an answer to the question, how and why President Roosevelt chose Chester Nimitz to lead the war in the Pacific. We will explore how early childhood experiences shaped his personality, developed his intellectual abilities, and led him to choose to attend a United States military academy.